Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today I'm going to be reviewing the Artisol D16, so a 16 inch display tablet, and I'm going to be comparing it to the Wacom One. So first of all, let's take a look at the tablet. You can see, like I say, it's 16 inch and you've got the programmable buttons down the side. I should say to start off with that it's 300 pounds at the moment. I found one that was slightly cheaper than that actually, but it's roughly around 300 pounds, which is pretty much the equivalent to $300 and the Wacom one comes in at around 400 so of course the Wacom is more expensive so does this compare is the main question in terms of build quality I'd say it's not quite as good as some of the Wacoms that I've used you can see slight bubbling around the edges where the sort of protective layer isn't really uh, sitting quite on top of the screen so there's problems already there it doesn't actually interfere with the actual feel of the laptop at all and they are just around the edges so that does indicate to me that the build quality might not be quite as good it does have a rough screen so it's quite nice in terms of the drawing experience but a laminated screen these days tend to have less parallax so that your pen will actually sort of meet the screen a bit closer to be honest i thought the parallax was pretty good on this though and comparable to the wacoms that i've used so what else do we get in the case we get a pen holder with some nibs and things like that within it. Of course, it's got a pen. It's got two programmable buttons and it feels quite nice and it's a good drawing experience. No problems there. It comes with a fold away stand. And you can adjust this to different heights. That's the tallest it will go. So it's a little bit shallow for me, but that for most people is fine. And it's just something you get used to. You get a free glove. And there are lots and lots of wires. There seems an excessive amount of wires for this one, to be honest, but it works fine. In terms of the setup, it wasn't too bad. I did have problems with my old system. I've just brought a new computer system and it's absolutely fine on that. But with my old system, I did have my Wacom drivers installed. I did uninstall them all, of course, before trying to install the Artisol, but they seemed to interfere in some way and it didn't work. So in terms of driver, you never quite know with these sort of brands that are slightly more or slightly less known than uh, something like Wacom. Uh, but with my new system, it wasn't a problem. Easy to find the drivers, installed it, and it all worked. So the main thing then is the drawing experience, and you can see some of my work in the background. I did have some slight issues. Generally speaking, it was really nice. So like I said, the parallax was quite good. You were sort of close to what you were drawing. Um, the calibration seemed really good, even on the edges. Uh, so you didn't have problems clicking on um, one of your program or file icons or anything like that. Um, so that was all very nice, pen pressure, all good, and it was a comfortable feel. The only problem I did have, I had a few glitches when it came to some things like the keyboard shortcuts. If I put a keyboard shortcut in to do a command, it would kind of stick when I took my hand off the keyboard shortcut and it would keep doing that for a moment. And that really got in the way of things within Blender. So when I was in Blender and using the sculpting tools, I'd, I often use the middle mouse button, for example, to move around the viewport. Holding that middle mouse button down, moving around, and then taking it off, it would keep moving around. When you click or when you, let's say, tap, and you move your mesh around with something like the snake hook tool, it did seem to stick for a while. Even when I took the pen off the surface, it seemed to move with the object. And that was a big problem for me, and it really interrupted the artistic flow. In Photoshop, it wasn't so bad, but you're not using the shortcuts in the same way it feels like in Photoshop. Maybe it's more sort of attuned to Photoshop and calibrated for things like Photoshop, and 3D was a sort of secondary thought. So it's absolutely fine if you're a 2D artist, and those sort of uh, glitches don't seem to be as obvious. I still felt like they were there a little bit though. Things like um, double clicking on icons just seemed a little bit sluggish and slow, um, or it didn't pick it up sometimes. They're minor points, but they're still important when you're in your creative flow because it can interrupt it. It's worth saying there's a pro version, the Artisol D16 Pro, and that's got the laminated screen, so you'll see less parallax with that. The Wacom One, so the um, comparable in price, uh, that doesn't have the laminated screen. So if you were to choose between the two in, the, in those terms, then I would say the Artisol D16 Pro would be a bit of a winner if the parallax is important to you. But those glitches really did kind of kill the whole experience for me. So would I buy one? I think you know my answer. It's a no because of those problems I was getting in Blender. 
wasn't so noticeable in Photoshop, but obviously I use Blender all the time. So that was a big uh, problem for me and I, I wouldn't recommend it for that reason. I would say the Wacom one is a better buy, even though it's £100 more expensive or $100. However, I think it's worth looking into the Huey on Canvas and that range because I've heard some good things about that. So hopefully this gives you some idea about the Artisol D16 and the Artisol brand itself. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.